Hi, happy Sunday. Welcome to A Place of Faith. Second Sunday in July already. Kind of hard to believe. Time just keeps passing. They have a, a saying that the days seem to drag, but the weeks just fly by. Are you finding that that's true for you? Today we're going to be exploring the spiritual principle of connection. A place of faith invites and encourages all who are seeking a community to empower, support, and explore deeper understanding of spirituality and recovery of all kinds. We join together with our family and loved ones in a journey to enlightenment and recovery and supporting one another spiritual with, spiritually without judgment or prejudice. As we explore the spiritual principle of oneness and connection, we are so excited to have as our speaker today, Becky R. And we will have uh, Judy G. joining us as well. Welcome to A Place of Faith. Sit back and enjoy. All these pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered, mended and whole Empty-handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free Amazing grace How sweet the sound that saved a soul like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see oh I can see you now and I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down And raising up the broken to life You take our failure You take our weakness You set your treasure in jars of clay so take this heart, I'll be your vessel, the world to see, your life in me, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, oh, I can see you now, I can see the love in your eyes, laying yourself down. And raising up the broken to life. Good afternoon. My name is Judy G. And it is my pleasure to be here today to take us along further in this journey of oneness connection and offer you some concepts to contemplate regarding oneness and connection. But before I do, I would like to dedicate this portion, what I have to share with you, to a, in memory of 
a very dear family friend who passed away this Friday evening very, very suddenly. And as we mourn her loss, her humanness, we know that she knows what connection really is. What we're going to share with you today is you don't have to wait till you make your transition or pass away. You can have that connection, that oneness, while you are still here in your humanness. Let me give you some things to contemplate. Being connected, oneness, non-dualism. This can all be part of your journey, your journey to connect with God. And as you go deeper into recovery, you find that. But let's start with something that we look at, these two opposites, dualism and non-dualism. Dualism is a state where there is a permanent separation. Non-dualism is just the opposite. Dualism means two. Specifically, the two are set up in opposition and separate in some essential way. Right, wrong, yes, no, black, white. Any pair of opposites. You agree with this, you don't agree with that. There's just, everything is, has an opposite. Non-duality is actually a translation of a script, excuse me, of a Sanskrit word which simply means not to and points to the essential oneness, wholeness, completeness, unity of life, a wholeness which exists here and now prior to any apparent separation. It, it's a word that points to infancy, uh, not infancy, intimacy, a love beyond words right at the heart of the present moment experience. People who live non-dualistically tend to pursue many, tend not to pursue many outside interests and certainly not ones that are ego-driven. They do not pursue things of the world, but simply welcome what comes. I believe you know in Christian scripture where it says, you are in the world, but not of the world. How do you do that? You're not controlled by outside things. I'd like to offer you some quotes from some famous people that you will recognize and what they have to say about it. We are members one of another so that you cannot injure or help your neighbor without injuring or helping yourself. Those are words of George Bernard Shaw. Martin Luther King Jr. has this to say, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. And Albert Einstein, I have gotten to read a lot of his things and just reading the depth of who this man really was has been so intriguing. A human being is part of the whole, called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself his thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest of kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from the prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Nobody is able to achieve this completely, but the striving for such achievement is in itself a part of the liberation and a foundation for inner security. As we continue on 
in this service, Linda B. is going to offer us a principle in action of oneness and connection. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you on concepts to contemplate. Hi again. I'm still Linda B. I was absolutely honored when I was asked to share about this principle in action. And I think as always, when we start focusing on a spiritual principle, we start seeing it everywhere in so, so many different ways. This is one of those things that I just totally did not get when I, I needed to be in recovery, but I wasn't yet. It's something in recovery that just, I've learned to count on it. It's absolutely true. We are connected beyond anything that we can see or touch or say. It's more than being related. It's deeper and it's bigger. <clears throat> and I'll give you an example, one of many, many I could come up with. But this is pretty recent, so, so I'll use this one. We talked about last week the spiritual principle of faith. And this kind of goes right with that. I have learned, eventually, right, it took me a long time to learn this one, that when something is showing up in my life, that when something is, is coming up, to take a step back and ask myself, hey, <laughs> what was I praying for? You know, what is this about? What was I asking for? And almost always, okay, probably always, I can see a direct connection between whatever is happening and whatever was going on in my head. It's really kind of spooky. But I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I was a drug and alcohol counselor for about 20 years. I started in a residential facility. It was called the end of the block, right? It was one of those places where minimum stay is 90 days. It wasn't unusual for people to stay with us for a year and sometimes even two years. Really intensive, intensive treatment. And after I'd been there for about five or six years, the powers that be, right, the, the board of directors started giving me interns, people to show up in my life and, and learn from me and intern with me. So as is the nature of, of the world, the place I was working at closed just as one of my interns was opening a different facility and he asked me, please come, I need you to be here. So I went and I worked there for a long time. And towards the end, I was thinking, you know, I've helped a lot of people. I think I've done a lot of good here. I've made a lot of people crazy. And maybe it's time for me to move on to something else. Maybe there's a different calling, a different place for me. And lo and behold, the doors closed. So I called the pastor of Unity El Cajon, where we are right now, and said, hey, I just found out that next week is the last week of my job. It's closing, it's ending. He says, you know, I was just thinking about you. You should probably come and see me. <clears throat> I said, okay, you know, suddenly I have plenty of time. So I showed up and we sat and we talked and he said, I've been thinking that you should start your own service, that you should probably start a service reaching out to people in recovery. And here we are. Isn't that amazing? Connection, connection, connection. It's like we're all one. It's pretty amazing stuff. Thank you for letting me be of service.
I am but a small voice I have but a small dream The fragrance of a flower In the unpolluted air I am but a small voice I have but a small dream To smile upon the sun Be free to dance and sing Be free to sing my song to everyone Come young citizens of the world We are one, we are Citizens of the world, we are one, we are one. We have one hope, we have one dream, and with one voice we sing. And love for all mankind Peace, prosperity And love for all mankind But a small voice, I have but a small dream to smile upon the sun, be free to dance and sing, be free to sing my song everywhere. Citizens of the world, we are one, we are one. Come, young citizens of the world, we are. one dream and with one voice we sing peace prosperity and love for all mankind Prosperity and love for all men. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. That was that was absolutely amazing. So let's catch our breath. And I invite you to join me in meditation. Settle in, get comfortable. Let go of anything that doesn't need to be a part of this moment. Close your eyes. Become aware of your breathing. Every breath.
the air that you draw into your body has always been here. Since the beginning of time, as you let it move through you and release it, it goes into the world. When the time is right, it will be breathed in again. Maybe tomorrow, maybe a year from now, the essence remains. The breath remains. The connection between us remains. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself deeply, deeply move into it. We are one, nourished by the same air, sharing the same water, connected as one spirit. Rejoice. You are not alone. You have never really been alone. One love moving through us. Seeing all of us in acceptance, in beauty, and in awe. Relax. Rejoice in the oneness that is your truth. You are essential. You are beloved. You are surrounded in all that has ever been. Allow your spirit to heal in the love, in the oneness, in all that could ever be. It comes from you. It is you. When you're ready, Awaken, awaken to the truth, awaken, rejoice, and claim your oneness. Open your eyes, look
look around you. Rejoice. Awaken. Be one. And so it is. Thank you for that wonderful meditation. Um, I feel so grounded right now, so that's good. And I'm not sure, I was sitting there during some taping, and I'm not really sure that it comes across on the screen. But I felt compelled to mention that this is an amazing worship team. Um, and the music uh, just, I mean, I'm in awe. Of, of Jody's voice and his talent. And Judy and Linda are, are just, I'm not really sure that they come across the way that I see them, but they're amazing. And they have such strength in this and what we're trying to do here. And I just feel very blessed to be part of this. And I appreciate you guys. And I want you guys to all know it, okay? And I want everybody else to know that I appreciate you guys. We don't say that enough around the world, right? We'll begin with a prayer, and I want to say thank you, God. Thank you, thank you for these lovely people around me, for their strength, for their willingness to be a part of this connection and feel together, and it's like we know each other, and we're so blessed to have this connection, and we want you to feel this connection, and we want this connection around the world. God, and have everybody that's listening share it with somebody and know that we're thinking of them, we love them, and we are them, and we appreciate them as well. Thank you. Okay, so connection is our, I get a little animated, so I might move around a little bit, okay? (laughs) Um, I want to thank you for being asked to be share here. I love sharing here. Uh, I don't know, nobody knows here, but in 1998, I was actually diagnosed with social anxiety, and I never thought I'd be up on a stage, so it's really fun to be able to have that talent now. I feel like I was misdiagnosed, but anyway, today I want to share with you, my part of the connection is the tree of life, and um, it's as seen anew by me, okay, the way that I see the the tree of life. So... A few weeks ago, I was driving to Arizona to pick up my oldest granddaughter. And if you ever get the chance to meet this amazing young lady, uh, she is a light in this world. And um, my heart just overflows with love every time I'm around her. She just oozes it, which is amazing. And um, as I was driving along, I, because a lot of stuff was going on with me at the time, I had a brain flood, and I call, always call them a brain flood because it just feels like all this stuff just came through. And this is where I got this talk, and it just all makes sense this way, and it was kind of like downloads. I don't know if you guys get downloads, but I, I get these downloads. This is like a flood, and I have to start typing, or I have to start. I pick up my phone, and I start talking to my phone. People are, you know, what is she doing? But I have to record it because I know I'm going to lose it if I wait 20 minutes. So This is where this came to me. So I don't know that it's a coincidence at all that all this came at the time with what was going on in my life. And we'll get into that more in a little bit. But um, I am in the midst of taking ministerial classes. And with the Urban Ministry Through Unity, and it's an amazing ministry program. And um, the thing about these classes is they're very personal. You get a concept, you learn about it, and then they tell you to turn it inside. <laughs> so you get a chance to wear it and, and live with it. And in one of my classes, they asked us to come up with an affirmation. And this clicked with the tree of life. My affirmation just flowed right out of me. I didn't even have to try. As my faith grows deeper roots and stronger branches as my world broadens. And I'm like, okay, where is this coming from, right? I think I hit two here. Skipping past that one. Okay. 
So a few years ago, I'm not a few years ago, lots of years ago, a few years into my recovery, I decided to make a geographical change. Now a lot of people, a lot of us do that, right? Some of us are, you know, different reasons. But I decided to do this. <clears throat> and I lived in the in Central Valley in Fresno, and I had been with my family, around my family, always. And if you ask my mom, which has passed away a long time ago, she would have said I was the glue of the family. And I think I was, you know, what was left over because it, I, I gave a lot. I helped a lot. I was the one that if anybody needed somebody, you came to me. So I have one sister. She's my little sister, and her name is Shauna. And when I announced that I was moving across to this, you know, to Tennessee, it was devastating for her and for me because pretty much I was her mom growing up. Um, we had a very close relationship. And I was very codependent with all my family, but especially with my little sister. So her and I started going to counseling. And this is where I actually think the seed was planted for the tree of life, which came to me later. Because when I went to this counseling session, and, all, and, and it just made sense that everything was connected, the therapist told me that my feeling of loss was because of how much I loved. So the greater you love someone, the more you will feel loss when they're gone, or they're not a part of you. Or, you know, and this was 20 something years ago, so texting, video chatting on cell phones really wasn't in, in the works yet. And so there was a very big sense of loss for me. But it came, came to mind that this is where the seed was planted because as above, so below, that's like what's in heaven is on earth the yin and the yang, everything, it's not, it's all connected. It's not separate. We actually are all connected. So there's so many other terms you can, can talk about it, but I learned more about this over the years. And um, the tree of life, I looked, started looking for the tree of life for signs to understand what I was learning. So the tree of life, if you have never seen one, and I, I think a lot of people in recovery have, they're usually, cir it looks like it's a picture of a circular, and you see the roots really spreading out, and then the ground's cut off, and then usually see big branches atop. Now that's not always the way it's pictured, but for the most part, that's, that is how it's pictured. And the tree of life is popular, and it's a universal symbol that represents multiple different things across various cultures and religions. And this symbol does not belong to one specific religion, okay? It's just used in different cultures. In Christianity, the tree of life is mentioned even in the book of Genesis. Um, it's the tree that grows in the Garden of Eden, and it's the source for eternal life. And some people believe that it is the symbol of the human humanity free from corruption and sin, while others believe it is it represents love. And the tree is believed to have healing properties and its fruits grants immortality. In Buddhism, the tree of life is also known as the Bodhi tree, and it's believed the tree that's the tree of enlightenment where the Buddha sat under it and he reached his enlightenment. And it's seen also as a very sacred symbol. In Islam, it's the tree of life is also known as the tree of immortality in the Quran. And it appeared in Eden and is the tree from which Adam and Eve ate after the Allah had forbidden them to do so. In Judaism, um, the tree of life represents in what sustains and nourishes life. And even in Celtic beliefs, they have the tree of life is still, it's a prominent symbol still. And they believe the roots represent the other world. And that the trunk represents the mortal world and it connects the roots and the branches and the branches represent the world above or the heavens, okay? So we're all connected. Okay, so there's a universal meaning of the tree. That was who uses it, but the meaning is a connection to everything. It symbolizes togetherness and serves as a reminder that you are never alone or isolated, but rather that you are connected to the entire world. Does anybody ever see um, the, what is that name of that film, the 
with the little aliens. I can't even remember them. Where they're all sitting there and they're humming and they're all connected. And it's like there's this one, one people and they're all a part of something else. So we're going to probably take that out. Sorry. I'll just keep going. Because I can't remember the name of the movie. Do you remember it? <laughs> they're green and they're tall, or blue and they're tall. Okay. So with the tree of life, the roots dig deep and they spread into the earth. And they accept nourishment from Mother Earth. And then that nourishment goes up into the, up into the trunk and into the branches. And it creates the seeds for eternal life. So as a Reiki master, I use this a lot, this symbol of the tree of life in my meditations because when I'm working with people, I have to ground myself first because I don't want to accept, you know, whatever I'm trying to help them through. I want it to be fed into the world and connected to everybody else. So I ground myself as part of, and I spread my, spread my imaginary roots and they go down and they're really not a magic, but I spread them down and I allow their energy to pass through me and out of them and out of me. So in ancestry, family and fertility, the tree of life says that a family grows and expands through many generations. And this symbol also is about fertility and it's a way to keep growing through the seeds because trees produce seeds, either seeds or saplings. Um, the, and the growth and the strength, they spread through the roots deep into the soil and they stabilize the roots are meant to stabilize the tree so that it doesn't topple over. And usually with most trees, whatever you see on top is how big the, the, um, the spread of the roots is as well on the bottom. Trees can weather the toughest storms, which they are such a prominent symbol for strength, right? So they start out as a small, delicate sapling, and they grow over time into large, giant trees. We just recently bought a home with a lot of oak trees. They're huge, and it's beautiful. There's all these little saplings, and I'm hoping to replant them. I'm not really sure if I'm going to get to it, but I'd love to move them and just make a big driveway full of these beautiful oak trees. So individually, the trees are all unique, just like us, right? Everybody has their own branches, everybody has their own roots. Some people grow, you know, close to the wall. Some people, you know, it's like everybody's individual. So the growth is unique in human life, being as a different experiences shape the way we grow, different experience, different life, different places shape the way the trees grow. And for, of course, for the immortality and rebirth, the trees lose their leaves and they seem to be dead during the winter, at least most trees, not all trees, but. They seem to be dead during the winter. And then through the nourishment in the roots coming back up, they grow new leaves for the summer and the spring, in the spring and the summer. And they also carry the seedlings out. So as a symbol of peace, trees have been a relaxing presence as they stand tall and still while the leaves flutter in the breeze. And they serve as a reminder for the unique, calming feeling that everyone gets from trees. I know I do. I love hearing the wind blow through the trees and the rustle of them. And, 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 I, and I love in the fall stepping on the tree leaves as I walk and the, the, the dead leaves because the crunch is so cool. So as you may have guessed, I've been a 12-stepper now for a couple of decades. <laughs> and um, I know usually by now when something's going on, my pot gets stirred a little bit. So when this this drive happened and all this stuff was going on with me and this download came, I knew that I had to talk about this tree of life. My tree of life was different and I had to understand it. And they call this the tree of addiction. So my roots were um, where I came from. There was, you know, they talk about shame. There was a lot of dysfunction. There was a lot of pain. There were many addictions. There were, um, you know, there was um, abuses of, of almost every fashion. So before I could even come out into the world where my trunk was, all these things were part of, of my, my tree of life. And what happens when, 
when we start out with roots like that and come up through the trunk, which I believe symbolizes the, the, the family of origin, the, the, the things that are around us, because you know, it's like when they can slice a tree open and they look at the rings, they can actually tell what happened at any particular soul. Like 10 years ago, there was a really bad fire and it burnt this side, it came from this. I mean, they can tell things by these rings. So I, I feel like this is also part of the trunk of our tree of life is all these things that happened and stirred. And then our branches come out and we have addictions. We have gambling, we have sex addiction, we have alcoholism and drug addiction. I mean, there's so many addictions out there anymore. I don't even know, I know you know, how to count them all. But this is what comes out when you're when our, when my roots are rooted in this shame and pain and hurt, and I come up through this right. So the leaves sprout, the new cycle of life, and then they die, and they're shedding their old stuff. So this is what I'm seeing. This is I'm just describing my my tree of it of uh, life, addiction, really. So with the recent loss of um, someone in my family of origin, um, I still have a very fresh cut going on. And I'm trying to figure out in my own way with this tree of life and this connectedness, how do I grow? How do I keep going? How do I navigate through this thinking that I don't, I don't know why my mind thought I, this person was going to be around for a long time. I just kind of, you know, you think somebody's always going to be there and you don't really realize when they're not, that they're not going to be there. And then one day they're not. So we stay connected. We have all of this running through us and we have to find a way to stay connected. So for me, here are some clues. All of my steps must include mindful balance in order recovery. I have to not only think about staying in recovery, I have to think about my self-care. I have to think about the halt. I constantly, am I too hungry, too angry, too lonely, too tired? All of these have to be, I have to have this balance in order to move through. And I am a master gardener, so I've been trained to know things about gardening, right? So fertilizer, all these roots down here of mine that were painful and hurtful and didn't really give me the best start in life, I am going to feed them some, some fertilizer. Now, it's interesting that fertilizer is mostly made of poo. <laughs> and being Master Gardener, I know that. But it's so cool because I'm going to nourish them through the ground and that nourishment will feed up and transform me. And it works because it's all about the nourishment. When you're a master gardener, you know that if your ground is good, you can grow anything, right? So, and the shedding at the top, I'm going to let go. If it's ready to go, it's time to go. You know, I wasn't really ready for this person to leave my life. But it wasn't my choice. It was time to go. And I can still love and not have that person right standing next to me or, or answer the phone. When you're a master gardener, you also know that you can trim the trees, right? So if we have addiction over here, you can actually trim. Just remember, it's a balance thing because if you take more than 25% at any given time, at any given season, you could kill the whole tree. So you have to be balanced in what you do. Take some off of here or work some with that. Trim it so that it doesn't go this way anymore. You know, you can do all of those things. You cannot, we cannot cut out the roots. This is the part that scares me the most. I wish I could. I wish I could go to every person I know and cut those roots out for them. Because I believe that their lives could have been a whole lot different, especially I know mine could have had they not been rooted the way they were in my tree of life. But there's nothing we can do about that. So what we've got to do is fertilize it and change it. We have to start where we are and move on from there. 
I am living, breathing proof that we are connected. The therapy session I talked about with my sister, you know, we went to several different therapy sessions and those seeds were being planted. I didn't know they were being planted, but they are some of the biggest trees now that I have ever felt in my life. And my sobriety allows me to learn the truth of who I really am. And my higher power loves me even when I'm not all that I think that I should be or I want to be. My higher power loves me anyway. That trip I was telling you about to pick up my oldest granddaughter, when my brain flooded and I heard this talk, would have never taken place if I had not taken that move to Tennessee in 1998. You see, because the person that went with me was her mother, and she was 15 at the time. And that's where she met her father. That would have never happened. I would not be standing here today. And this beautiful person would not be in my life and in the lives of other people lighting up their lives because she would have never been born. So we are all the tree of life as life. And connection is all around us, through us, and as us. So I'd like to pray. I'd like to take a moment to rest deep in our own knowing, breathing in, and out as we say thank you to our higher power. Thank you. Thank you for the seeds of knowing, whether we know their seeds and they'll take time to grow, or whether we don't know their seeds and we just keep fertilizing and trimming and letting go. Our sobriety. Thank you for our sobriety and the connection that we rely on, the connection to each other, and the connection to this earth. We are ever so grateful for your presence in our life. Amen. Thank you, Becky, for that beautiful, beautiful personal message regarding the tree of life. And to Linda B., to Jody to all of us who have been part of this to bring the words connection and what they mean. There's a few announcements I'd like to share with you at this time. As part of our recovery, we are encouraged to be of service. And there's two organizations here in East County that could use some help. The Salvation Army is in need of food donations and the San Diego Blood Bank needs blood. You can look these up on the internet and find their location, but be of service. We also want to work with your organization. We can bring this service to your organization as a gift to your residents. You can contact us at a place of faith at zohomail.com. We are very familiar with the social distancing requirements so we can create a safe environment for your organization. You can also connect with us on Facebook or again email us to a place of faith at zohomail.com. We want to thank you for your contributions to keep this ministry going. You can send your checks to Unity Church of El Cajon at 311 Highland Avenue, El Cajon, California, 92020. Or you can go on to Unity's website. There is a donate button there that is safe and secure. And in the memo line, just put this as for a place of faith. Or we're able to take credit cards by calling the church office at 619-579-9586. And once we again open for public service, we will be changing our time to 12 noon. But stay tuned for those details. I'd like to call Jody back up for our closing song.
It's up to me to give of my heart. Love is my decision, and no one else can tell me to start. And once I decide to change. My mind, God will show me how. And love is my decision. It's my decision right here and now. Love is my decision. It's up to me to stand on that bridge, and love is my decision. No one else can make me forgive. And once I decide to change my mind. God will show me how love is my decision. It's my decision right here and now. My decision right here and now. It's my decision right here and now. And now, if you'll join me for our closing prayer, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is dying that we are born to eternal life. And so it is. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Until next time.